Hello, I'm Dr. Joel Gardner, and today we're gonna to talk about the human performance technology model. And specifically, we're gonna talk about the performance analysis component or steps within that model. So if, let's just think about the big picture for a second here. When you're doing performance improvement, you typically start with analysis to understand what's happening, what's causing these performance issues. Then you might go in and select an intervention and actually decide how you're gonna intervene and, and implement that solution or that intervention to solve the problem that you're seeing. So, but we're really just gonna focus on the first part, performance analysis today. So if we look over here at the board, we have um, some major sort of phases or steps or pieces of this performance analysis. So let's walk through each of these different steps or, or components, okay? So the first part here is our organizational analysis. And this is where we really get a sense for what the organization is, who they are, and the types of goals and strategies that they have. So let's, let's put down some specific things. So first of all, we wanna understand the vision and the mission of this organization. Who are they? What do they want to accomplish? Uh, right, this really helps us really get a feel for that because we need to align everything we do, we do with the organization's desires and goals. Okay, so the next thing is strategy. Any organization has a specific strategy for being successful in their market or in their purpose. And finally, we need to know what the issues are, the major issues that the organization is seeing. So this is your organizational analysis. And so in another video, we'll talk about some specific data gathering strategies for, the, for how to do this. But just at a high level, really we wanna look at, we wanna talk to our, uh, whoever our um, client is, the person who's actually hired us to do the work or has contacted us to do the work. We wanna talk to some of the major stakeholders and leaders of the organization to really understand this. Look at documentation as well. Okay, so this is your organizational analysis. Now, once you have a sense for this, this really helps you uh, feed into specifically the environmental analysis. So this is who they want to be, the things they want to accomplish, right? The organizational analysis. But the environmental analysis is more about what's actually happening within the organization. And this is where you really try to quantify and understand what's going on in the organization. And so there are different levels that you might think about when you're doing an environmental analysis. The first one that we think about, particularly as learning professionals, is the actual worker, the performer that we're thinking about. So if you are working, for example, um, in a training setting, and you uh, have a bunch of trainers that are helping to train on specific topic and so forth, that those trainers' performance is who you're thinking about. How can we help these trainers perform really effectively? The next level, though, is the work. So this might include specific processes or procedures that you have, uh, the, the flow of work from other organizations into that training organization and who you're working with, how you intersect with those. It could include um, what the responsibilities are for that specific work or even just the basic layout or procedures that you use, process, uh, organizational structure that you have. So this is the work level. And both of these, you, we know these are important to performance, right? You could measure performance at these different levels. So measuring the performance of the individual worker, we kind of get that, right? How are they performing? If it's the trainer, uh, how are they doing on their um, performance evaluations by the, the students or the learners who take their trainings? Uh, but the work then, this is the actual uh, process and procedures. How well is the training working overall? How does it fit into the organization? Does it meet the goals that we want it to, that, that we want that training to actually meet? So this is another level, work, worker, the work. The next level is the workplace. And so you're asking questions such as, well, um, what, what does the organization have in terms of resources or tools or particular um, knowledge that they have that's particular to them? What are the, what are, what are, how are those working? Are those actually performing the way we want them to perform? Is the organization itself, the workplace, actually performing the right way? And then the last thing, which can be talked about sometimes, is the, is the world. So the world is kind of this other level. And how is the workplace contributing to the world and the important factors that relate to the world itself? So you, whenever you do this analysis of the environment, you really try to look at these different levels. It's easy for us as instructional designers or learning professionals to focus on the worker level because that's where we usually focus, you know, knowledge and skills that they need and maybe some attitudes to be able to perform their work well. And that's really important. But each of these other levels have performances themselves that need to be looked at um, to really understand. Okay, so let's keep going here. So when you have a sense for what the environment actually is and how people are performing in the environment, 
um, then you, that really allows you to sort of tabulate what's the actual performance. And typically when you do that, it's going to be at these several different levels of, of the organization. Now, from the organization analysis, you're able to sort of extrapol extrapolate, really understand the desired performance. What is it that this client or this organization really wants to be happening? So in, this, in the training scenario, uh, we want to have at the worker level, right? We want to have uh, students or learners be really satisfied with the trainings that they take. And so maybe they measure the learner evaluations at the end of a given training session. We want our uh, uh, people who are coming out of the on new hire training class to come out and be able to perform their job to 85% accuracy or whatever that is. That's the worker level, right? And then the work level, we want those people who come out and work in this call center environment to be making X number of sales by the end of six weeks, right? The workplace, this whole call center is actually performing um, at 100% uh, of our goals, 100 to 105% of the goals that we have set, right? That's the workplace. So we're, able, we're starting to see that these four levels can be expressed in the desired performance and expressed in the actual performance. Now the nice thing or the interesting thing that comes after this is we're able to put together a gap analysis. That's this middle piece here. And this is where we say, here's the desired performance, and here's the actual performance, and therefore there's a gap. These should be quantifiable, right? You wanna make them actually measurable or quantifiable so you can say here's the very clear gap, what we've, we've come to. And this is really where we get our understanding of what we need to focus on and how we need to start to address that gap. Uh, all these other things give us the background, right? But once we have these kinda, this gap analysis of the desired and the actual performance, that's when we can move forward with really understanding how we can affect change. The next kind of flow here is to do our cause analysis. And this is where we look at the factors that are actually affecting performance. And typically these kind of be organized into two sort of big categories. One is the environment, environmental factors. And then there's also individual factors, individual factors. And so these two factors, or these categories of factors, really influence that performance. And so I think maybe if you, if you remember, there, there is a model called the behavior engineering model that really separates into these categories. And so some of these different things that you might see in these factors are, um, do they have the information they need, or are they getting the feedback they need to be able to perform effectively? Right? If these trainers don't really have what they need to perform in terms of information or knowledge to be able to train, or they're not getting any feedback on how they're actually performing, they can't perform as well. Uh, they need the environment supports, right? So like uh, job aids, we'll call them. Performance supports. I'll just call them job aids. Job aids that tell them, hey, here's the, you're actually uh, doing the training on this particular part of the topic, and so make sure you follow this, cover these topics and use this sequence. Job aids on what to do. Um, they have, people need to have the resources that they need to be able to do the job. So these are just some examples of those environmental factors that can really have a, a big impact on an individual's performance. And then of course there's the individual factors. And these can th include things like just having the skills or the knowledge that they need to be able to perform. If somebody doesn't have the skills or knowledge, they can't perform, right? Another thing to consider is capacity. If that individual does not have the capacity to perform, um, then maybe they need to be moved to another position or they need to actually be moved onto another organization, right? All right, and then the last thing is motivation. There has to be some level of motivation for that individual to work for whatever those rewards are or to work because it's intrinsic intrinsically valuable to them. So this is the cause analysis. You really look at what's causing, what's deficient in these categories that's causing this gap. And again, these often look at the worker level, the work level, or the workplace level. So these are, this is an overview of the performance analysis portion of the HPT model. So in the next video, we will be talking about how to actually begin gathering data to perform a performance analysis. Thank you.